Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara. My channel is all about making the most of your makeup collection, learning to project pan it, really get as much use out of it as you can, and to encourage you to stop looking elsewhere for the products that you want and really looking internally at your own collection. So, as you can tell by the title and by the thumbnail, today's video is going to be all about products that I really should get rid of but I have not yet. And I think some of the videos that I previously made have been kind of in this vein, similar in that they're videos where I talk about products that I'm not really sure if I should keep or not, products on the chopping block, products that I need to declutter, those kinds of things. But this video is specifically about products that I should get rid of because they are old, but I haven't yet decluttered. And I started thinking about this because of a couple different products recently, but I actually just the other day finished a conditioner. I think it's my last product from like the time before, if I wanna think about my makeup no buy, hair care, skincare, body care no buy, in those kinds of terms. Like this was a product from before that. I have been a no buy for over three years now. And for the entirety of that time, pretty much, it has been a makeup no buy. I have also not really bought any hair care products apart from shampoo and I bought a couple of skincare products but the no buy has basically referred to everything cosmetics and so finishing off this one last hair care product that I had from the time before is kind of a big occasion. I do have one conditioner that I need to finish that is about a year and a bit old so I need to finish that but when I'm done that I have no more conditioners like in my backup so I will need to start purchasing conditioner again if that's something I choose to do I'm not actually sure that conditioner makes a huge difference for me that's neither here nor there but yeah so I started thinking about all the products all of the makeup products that are sort of from the time before and there's far more makeup products that are from the time before I like how dramatic it is when I say it like that than hair care or skin care because those things I'm able to work through much faster and I just have far fewer hair care and skincare products than I do makeup. I might have had like a maximum of five moisturizers at one time, whereas like with eyeliners or something, I would have a maximum of like 10 or 15 or 20 eyeliners and those take a lot longer to work through than moisturizers. So because of this, I have far more products in the makeup category that probably should have been decluttered because they're old than in other categories. So that is what this video is about. Hopefully that introduction made a lot of sense and wasn't too rambly. I do have a couple of products that aren't makeup, but of course, as I said, this is going to focus primarily on makeup products. So let's get into it. And I will just say off the top that I know everyone has different comfort with expiration dates. I tend to be pretty lenient with them. So if that's something you're not into or that kind of like grosses you out, just click off right now. I just, I want to be honest because I know that there are people who are like me. I know a lot of my friends who aren't super into makeup don't even realize that, for example, powder products expire. I have a friend who, she's only ever had one palette, I'm pretty sure, it's her Naked 2 palette. She loves it, she got it in undergrad. I think she probably got it in like 2014. And we were talking about makeup expiration dates one time and she didn't even know that powder eyeshadows expired. Though keeping things past their expiration date isn't very normal in the beauty community. I think there's a lot of people do it. And so if you do it, that's okay, so do I, just, you know, be careful. But yeah, I'm certainly not going to pretend like it's not a normal thing, especially among like makeup users, not makeup YouTubers. I think if you're like public like this, you are probably adhering more closely to expiration dates, but uh, I'm just here to be honest. So don't leave any like rude comments below, please, about how I should have gotten rid of stuff because I know. <laughs> Like I am aware, <laughs> I have made the conscious choice not to. Some of these products will be familiar. Some of them I won't have talked about on my channel before. I actually think it's a good thing that a lot of the products show up in these kinds of videos where I'm thinking about decluttering because it shows that I don't have like a huge number of makeup products that I'm not sure if I should be decluttering. I used to have a ton of stuff that was really kind of on the brink, but now I don't think it's a huge number just because I have been much more curatorial. That's great. But yeah, let's get into it. All this to say, this first duo will be very familiar. This is in my project pan right now, and I've talked about them in a lot of videos. These are the Becca Duo. This is a primer. This is the foundation. 
So these have got to be the oldest liquid products in my collection. I don't have a ton of liquid or cream products just because that is not my preference. Like with face products, I just prefer to have powder. You know, obviously it's foundation and primer. Primer you cannot buy in a powder, as far as I know. Foundation you can, but I've actually never tried a powder foundation. I don't think that I would like them. So yeah, because these are liquid, they do go bad a bit faster and I don't know what year I got them in, but it was not recently. It was before my no buy. So it's been quite a few years. So these fall in the category of things that I should get rid of. I haven't yet, I haven't really noticed any change in the products. There's no smell. They still perform very well, but I know that people who are more easily able to declutter than I am, definitely would have gotten rid of these a long time ago. I actually did a poll on Instagram recently where I asked people like sort of what their threshold was, if there's someone who declutters things as soon as they are supposed to, or if they're like, what are expiration dates? And funnily enough, it was like, 95% or something wild like that who said what are expiration dates so that made me feel a little bit better I don't know if on YouTube audiences would respond differently but yeah my guess is that some of you if you own these also would not have gotten rid of them yet some would I guess I should say that everyone's comfortability with expiration dates are different and if you feel uncomfortable with keeping something past its best before date then stick to what feels best to you and of course you need to like pay attention to how your skin is doing but yeah as will be obvious if you have watched my channel before i am not great at sticking to best before dates if that makes you uncomfy probably don't watch the rest of this video just a heads up Okay, the next thing, I haven't talked about this for a while, but it definitely has come on my channel before. This is the e.l.f. Contouring Blush and Bronzing Powder. I still do enjoy this, and I think it is like a handy product because it is a darker bronzer than any of my other bronzers, but the texture of it has changed. I am not sure if you will be able to tell, but it looks like bumpy. I have commented on that before and someone said that some products are just like that, like it's not a case of aging, that's just how it is, but I don't remember this being bumpy before, like when I first got it. So I'm thinking maybe that is a sign that I should declutter it. I haven't yet, just because as I explained earlier, I don't have anything else like it, but I probably should have gotten rid of it by now. This next one is a double-ended eyeliner and I actually used this today just to confirm if my suspicions were correct because this used to be one of my most used products. Like it was the kind of thing where if I was spending a night elsewhere or like whenever I did my makeup, literally every single day, this came with me. So this is from Revlon. It is the Photo Ready Kajal liner. There is a purple end and a cream colored end and I used to use the purple end a lot because I loved purple liner but that has changed in recent years so it's really the cream color that I got most of the use out of and this used to be a super super creamy liner which is why it was easy to use in my inner corner that's primarily what I used it for it was just easy to put it in there but right before I started filming I tried it out because I remembered that the last couple times I'd used it I had had a little bit of a problem with that and yeah it's just not creamy anymore so there's the purple, that's pretty creamy. But the cream, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it on my hand. So that was just using a little bit of pressure. So it did apply it fairly well. But if I want more color than that, which I do, it's just kind of like sticky. It really doesn't apply very well. I don't know what year I got this in. I know people declutter eyeliners a lot faster because obviously it is close to your eyes. I haven't had a problem with that before, but I think that this product itself has changed. So because of that, I should probably have gotten rid of it, but I just haven't yet. As always, these videos are usually kind of <laughs> serve as like premonition or foreshadowing of future decluttering videos. Sometimes it takes a long time for these products to make their way into my decluttering pile, but at some point, like these will end up leaving my collection, is my guess. This next one is the CoverGirl Naturelux Mousse Mascara. I think this is the oldest mascara in my collection. Now, probably all of the mascaras that I own should be decluttered and I should start 
fresh because I've just had them for too long. I'm not going to get into that today, but this is the one I want to focus on and mainly because it is the oldest. It has a definite scent and so as a result of that I am still using it, but I'm using it on my brows. So I came up with the idea of doing this with a previous mascara that had like such a small amount left, but I really wanted to finish it off. So I was like, well, like yes, it's a very dark color and my brows aren't that dark, but if I use it in them because there's so little left, it'll probably work out fine. And it did, and I tried it with this one after that, and this one is even better. Like for some reason, it's just such a good brow gel. I'm actually gonna try to apply it for you right now, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Cause I, I literally have never heard anyone else suggest this. I'm sure I'm not the first one who's tried it, but I haven't heard of anyone else doing it before. They don't necessarily stay up all day, but it fluffs them up super, super well. Sometimes it can dispense a bit too much product, but usually it's perfectly fine. So yes, I do not intend to use this on my lashes anymore, but as a brow gel, I might as well. I don't have that many brow gels anyways, and neither of them dispense a darker color. So this gives me some variety and yeah, I'm just enjoying using it up that way. Okay, <laughs> these products will look familiar to you if you are paying attention to beauty YouTube circa like 2011. These are baby lips from Maybelline. I think I still have a couple more that are like still in the packaging. I don't think that these ones I got right at the beginning when they came out, like I might've got these later, like 2014 or something like that, but I still have them. So that's obviously been like a very, very long time. Now these are super chemically and durable because they have not changed whatsoever. They still smell like they always did. I mean, it's not necessarily a great smell, but they smell like they're supposed to. And I still find them like somewhat nourishing and cute. Like I still do like the packaging of these. So I'm sure you have not seen baby lips for many years, but here I am, I still have them. I still kind of like them. I would like to finish them someday soon, ideally, but for now they're sticking around. It is an extremely foggy day. <laughs> today outside there's some building like skyscrapers that are like two blocks away from me and I cannot see them so hopefully this lighting isn't terrible anyways so I just have a couple more makeup products and then some like body care type of things this is the elf conditioning lip balm spf 15 this is a product that I don't know when I got it I am worried that this was part of my first ever elf order I will not say what year that was but it really has not changed. You can see that it's kind of separated from the sides a tiny, tiny bit. I've seen that happen with other products, but it usually takes, it usually doesn't take that long for it to happen. I'm thinking in particular of MAC paint pots. That happens after maybe like four years, five years of having the product. Where is this? I think it's been longer than that, but the product itself hasn't changed. Smells the same as it always did. Like it's quite delightful. The problem with this is that it is a lip balm. It's a nice lip balm. It has, S well, probably doesn't have a SPF anymore, but it's in a tub. I don't like lip balms where I have to like stick my finger in something. I prefer to just be able to apply it. Even like the EOS lip balm, even though that's like a tub kind of, you can still apply it without your finger. But with this, I'm not able to do that. And then also it's, not a very like wide pot and so there's just not that much room for a finger especially if you have nails so it's just impractical i don't reach for this maybe there's a way for me to like change this product into like this or something like that then i think i would use it but at this point i just don't know if i will ever get any use out of it cute packaging way too bulky but i mean i, I admire what they were trying to do okay this next product is from the brand Kiko, which I believe is only available in the UK and certain parts of Asia. I think I might've gotten this in Germany. Anyways, this is a beautiful product. I love the aesthetic of it, how it's like wood or bamboo even. However, it smells really bad. Uh, like this has clearly expired. And unfortunately, I think it's, it's kind of like a more green product, like more natural ingredients, 
which is why it expired somewhat more quickly. And I really never got to use this because I think I got it right before I started my makeup no buy. And so I was trying to finish off a lot of other things before I went to this. And when I eventually did reach for it, it had already gone bad. So, you know, that's just one reason that you should really try to get use out of your whole collection. Not that I'm great at doing that, but I can't bear to get rid of it because I've never used it and it's so cute. It doesn't take up a ton of space. So that's why it's still in my collection. I have another product like that actually that I know has clearly expired and that I do not reach for because of that. This is the Stila All Over Shimmer. One of my best friends got this for me a long, long time ago and I always thought it was so cute. It honestly like never even occurred to me to actually use it because this is not so much a highlight. It's more like a body highlight. Like you're supposed to use it on like your arms or your collarbone. I used to be a makeup hoarder where I just like would not use products. So I didn't get very much use out of this. It also has a scent, but I just think it's so cute. Ooh, yeah, not good. Um, someone suggested at some point that I empty it and then put something else in it if I do want to keep the container, which I might do. I'm just not really sure what kind of product I would be able to do with that. It just sits in my bathroom because I think it's cute and it elevates the products in there. So that is it for makeup products. I do have a couple of skincare body care products that I will go through quickly just because I just wanted to include those in this. So this is the Golden Apple Shimmer Lotion from The Body Shop. This is another example of something that I've had for so long that I don't know when I got it. It was a, a gift, so I'm not sure. I feel like I got this for Kanaka some year, which makes me think that I was a lot younger because my family hasn't done gifts for Kanaka in a long time. <laughs> we just stopped when I went away for undergrad. Like my sister and I kind of aged out of Kanaka gifts or something. I don't know. It's not really the same as, as Christmas where you do it every year. Like you, you're just kind of supposed to gift to the kids as far as I know. Let me know if someone has different traditions, but that's just what <laughs> my family has done. So this is, it's nice. I like the scent. However, I just find that it doesn't actually work. Like when I put this on my hands, also the, this thing doesn't work. I always have to take <laughs> this out. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, today's chaotic. So I always have to take the thing out in order to apply it, but I do. And then my hands are just as dry as they were before, but shimmery because it's a shimmering body lotion. So there you go. Shimmering, very nice. So, you know, if I want a body lotion just so I can shimmer, it's perfect. But that's not usually why I want a body lotion. I want a body lotion to moisturize my hands. There's more than half left. I would be able to use this up if it was effective, but because it's not, it's like, what is even the point in reaching for it? If I want a hand cream, I'm not going to reach for this one. So, <laughs> yeah, this is this is really old. Cool idea, but um, yeah, just really not practical to keep this around anymore. Cute packaging, though. The other skincare thing are... These are noisy. So these are some makeup wipes. If you know me, you know that I try to be pretty eco-friendly. And so of course I do not buy any kind of single use makeup product. I don't use cotton pads. I don't use makeup wipes, but these are remnants of my earlier days. And I don't know how old they are, but I have actually been trying to slowly work through them. This one from Aveeno, they've actually kind of dried up. So I just wet them and they still seem to work perfectly fine. The scent is still quite nice. And I'd rather, you know, at least get use out of them than have to throw them out. They're, they're not irritating at all, even though they are old. So I tend to use these when I have like a night out and I don't feel like doing my whole face routine. I'll just use one of these so that I am still like finding ways to make them work. These ones, these eye makeup remover pads, I don't even know. I don't think I've tried to reach for these. They are open because I did use them at some point, but yeah, I'll have to see if these ones are still good. They're very old, but I am still getting use out of them. This is probably something that I should have included in my products that I want to finish in 2022 because I just want that kind of thing out of my life. Like they've just been taking up space. I don't buy that kind of thing anymore. So that's something that's like easily could just leave. And then the last thing, this is actually a makeup tool. Look at what a disaster this is. So this actually broke this i use this part to comb through my eyelashes if they're looking really clumpy or they're not separating or something but it broke so it's a lot more difficult to use and i'm a lot more likely to like stab my eye with it than i was when it had the full thing i haven't gotten rid of it yet just because i don't have it a replacement i will be looking for a replacement but until then i'm just keeping this because it's it's still handy it's just annoying that it's broken 
I feel like this video ended up being me trying to justify or explain why I haven't gotten rid of these products, but whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that was my video on products that I have not yet gotten rid of, but probably should. Do you have a lot of products that are sort of in the same category? I would love to hear if you are like me. If you're not, please, no judgments in this space. Thank you. I, I feel like I gotta say, like, we do need to strike a balance in all of this. Makeup companies sometimes make their expiration dates sooner than they actually are because they want people to buy more products. You know, if, if your eyeshadow palette says that it's going to expire in 12 months, it's probably not. You're probably fine to keep using it after that first year. I have heard that some things are even more ridiculous. Like, I don't know, I don't remember who's telling me, but someone was saying an eyeshadow palette said it had a six month expiration date which is ridiculous even if you're using that eyeshadow palette only and every single day for those six months you can't possibly finish an eyeshadow palette in that amount of time i also spoke recently about how the urban decay setting spray has a six month expiration date which seems unrealistic so anyways that is it for the products i will of course be talking about a book that i've been reading lately as i do in every video so let's get into that segment so this is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. I am late on the bandwagon with this one. I feel like it probably came out in 2017, 2018. Okay, more recent than I thought. I've just heard so much about this book that I feel like it's been on my TBR for like years and years. And I gotta say, I'm not that far in. I'm about 60 pages. But so far it is beautiful and heartbreaking and just as good as everyone has said quick summary it's about a black couple in the u.s i want to say it takes place in like the 80s or 90s i don't know where i got that idea but it does feel a little bit dated like intentionally dated and the man the husband is wrongly accused i don't think it's ever clearly stated but he seems to have been accused of sexually assaulting a woman the woman's race is not stated but i assume she's white because of how these things tend to happen and he is sent to jail for 12 years and so far most of it has been just their letters back and forth to each other during his time in jail i'm just finding it very emotionally affecting like i'm just tearing up all the time while reading this it's so well written so if that sounds interesting to you like the kind of book you would read i would highly recommend it i think it's excellent so far so that is going to be it for today's video thank you so much for watching okay let me know what your oldest product is in your collection how long you have had it for i will not be judging okay i just want to hear how long you guys have had your products and if you're even worse than me or just as bad as me because that will make me feel better thanks so much for watching and i will talk to you next time Bye bye